Here we go. Route 7 and 7. It's Kate jumping in here from Route. And I'm jumping in for the moms out there that need the reality of the Word of God alive in their home. And in busy days, we can get stuck. But those that are part of our Root families really glean from this, and those that aren't really glean from this. So here we go. Let's get started. Seven minutes on the clock. We're talking about sin in Root. And in our home, uh, sin is easily identified, but sometimes can get entangled with hindrances. So there's a difference between um, hindrances and sin. Let me give you an example in Hebrews. Hebrews 12.1 Since therefore we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Now, is there an age there that you can see? Does it say, uh, let us who are 18 and older and moved out of our parents' house. Uh, let us who are 15 and older and no longer are in the toddler and adolescent stage. No, there is no age there. So I present to you the question of which we present to all of our Root families. Hey, remember you can join RootBible.com, register for free in our adult class is every Wednesday, 1030 a.m. live and interactive. So uh, check that out. We'll be talking about these same subjects. We're being invaded by our kitties in case you see. Oh, there it is. Okay. So hindrances and sin, they're two different things. We have to be careful when when ministering to our kids, when edifying them, encouraging them, when rebuking them, when correcting them, that we're guiding them in the difference between something that's going to hinder their race. Uh, sanctification process is another thing the Bible calls it. A sanctification process or if it's actually sin. Okay, but both need to happen. See, when we receive salvation, actually receive salvation, if our children actually receive salvation, their sin has been dealt with. But now, for that reason, we teach them how to live a sanctified life so that that seed, that new life that's been put in them may now rule and reign and push out anything of the carnal nature, the old nature, the earthly nature, the Bible calls it. And we do that by constantly laying aside any hindrances that would keep us from running the race God has for us. And that's each individual without an age limit. So my daughter, my son, your daughter, your son, yourself, your spouse, there is a race to run. There is a purpose and a plan that we have been grafted in each individually to a body, to a vine, to draw life from. So uh, sometimes our kids can, can um, do things and we'll correct them as if it's sin. Right, so uh, one of the sheets we have right now going on, uh, this was last week, but my kids still haven't done it yet, so they'll be doing it this week, was like dealing with emotions and not letting them lead and guide you. That's not a sin. But when you are angry and you don't know what to do with it, it can lead to sin. When you're sad and don't know what to do with it or what the Bible says to do with it, it can lead to sin. When you're disappointed, when you're worried, when you're sensing to be jealous or fearful or scared, it can lead to sin, which is why we want to head off hindrances in our families, in our children's, in our lives uh, long before they would become sin. And one way to do that is to be able to, to correct, uh, rebuke, encourage by the word. So this really cool worksheet is totally free when you register rootbible.com or check out our Facebook page at Root Bible Academy. Uh, there's a group and there's a Root of Revival page. Um, you can check those out and, and get those for free and start to, to work as a parent, uh, encouraging your children to recognize hindrances that are holding them back from all that God has placed inside of them when they received Christ Jesus, all that the Holy Spirit wants to lead them into, which is so much greater than we can even imagine with our natural minds. And the way that we do that is by guiding them to the Word of God guiding them to the answers that allow them to take authority over hindrances with the word of God. Let that word divide soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and allow them to be led into truth, take authority over those things, understand what to do with those emotions. Emotions are real. They come, but know what to do with them that those emotions don't turn into a carnal excuse to sin. 
that would draw them away from what God's, God has for them, as Hebrews 12, 1 says, and keep them from running their race. And when we give our children, when we um, activate these tools on a regular basis in our homes, this is normal life. Hey, I see that you're angry. What does the word say to do with that? Hey, buddy, I can tell you're sad from this experience. What does the word tell us to do with that? Hey, I know you're disappointed right now. Let's turn to the word and let the Holy Spirit bring some revelation there in what to do with this disappointment. There's so much power in teaching our children what to do with their emotions, with their, you know, the last couple have been about thoughts, but now we're also going to talk about emotions. We cannot let our children think that emotions, that feelings can lead their life. And if we don't teach them what to do with those emotions and feelings by the word of God and the leading of the spirit who will make that truth known to us in wisdom and understanding in the revelation of him, that's what Ephesians says. If they don't know that, then they're going to think that these emotions they're having can guide them into decisions they should make that might not be right, into opinions they should have that probably aren't right if they're apart from the word, then outlooks of the world or others that they um, should have because of the way they feel. If they don't know how to take their feelings and go to the word of God and find out what to do with that feeling, that sadness, that disappointment, that anger, that worry, what does the word say to do with those emotions? God gave us emotions. Emotions are good. They help us recognize something needs to be addressed. But the only way to address it, the only thing that's going to bring life, the only thing that's going to transform us, renew us, and set us free into this race to run it in success for Christ Jesus, the only thing that's going to set our kids, our children, our youth, our families up for success is the Word of God and finding out what it has to say about everything, and particularly our feelings and our emotions. This is Kate Richter. I am so glad you joined me for Route 7 and 7. For every mom out there, seven days a week, you are on. And for that reason, you need this seven minutes to be encouraged in what to do with the Word of God in your family to keep your family running their race in success, running their race for what God's created them to do, their destiny that He knew before, your children, you, your spouse, or anyone in your family was even in the womb. You are that special. So tune in, find out how easy he made it. He gave us all the tools in his word. He equipped us with his spirit and we can raise our families in success no matter how we feel. We can even find out for ourselves, mamas, what to do with those feelings. Thanks for tuning in. It's a super blessing to be able to do this. Remember rootbible.com, register for free. Your kids, your youth can join classes. You yourself can join classes live and interactive, so check it out. Have a wonderful evening, and God bless.